Hello everyone, so today I'm going to set up a quick video where we're going to walk through the process of designing, printing, and assembling stamps with the Glowforge. So let's get started with the design phase. So this next phase is going to go pretty quick, but essentially what I'm doing is I am finding my vector art, I'm going to set my typography to outlines, and I'm going to get everything in like one color, nice and flat, ready. So for the type, I just went to type, create outlines. Now I'm gonna delete the JPEG color fill that was behind this design. And then I'm gonna highlight it and I'm gonna reflect it by going to object, transform, and reflect. This is really important to do now because if you forget to do this and you spend all this time engraving the stamp and it's backwards when you try and print it, you're gonna be really disappointed. So now I'm actually gonna move over to Photoshop. And this is important because in Photoshop, we're gonna be able to add the shoulder to our stamp. You'll learn more about the shoulder later, but for now, let's just create a simple artboard. So this is a five by five square at 300 resolution. Then I'm going to actually copy from Illustrator and paste my artwork into Photoshop. So after I've pasted in my artwork, I actually need to resize it. And you can do that easily using the, uh, the height parameter and the width parameter that are at the top of the bar here. And you can kind of see that highlighted. So something interesting you can do is you can actually just sort of double click in there and type in your measurement. So even if it's in pixels, if you type in two inches, it's going to scale to two inches. With that all properly scaled, I'm just going to kind of check everything out. And you can see me sometimes zooming in and out to make sure that I have everything where it's supposed to be. And I'm going to go to my background layer. I quickly double clicked it and that makes it an editable layer and now I'm going to fill it with the paint bucket tool with solid black. I'm now going to cl click on my artboard layer and hit command U. That's going to bring up the hue and saturation panel. I'm going to check colorize and I'm going to drag the lightness to 100%. With our artwork now correctly inverted, our next step is to double click the layer with our artwork on it. Not on the text but next to it and that will bring up the layer styles panel. We're going to be applying an outer glow, and this is going to create a shoulder so that when we do our 3D engrave, all of the thin lines are supported and the stamp will ramp up correctly. So if you just sort of follow my settings here, I'm going to show a quick little screenshot of that in a moment, you should have a pretty good start for your stamp. Don't be afraid to play with a little bit. What you're really looking for is a nice, smooth gradation between the white down into the black. You don't need it to go super far. But essentially, if you see how I move these sliders around, you can kind of see what the effect is. Feel free to kind of move them around, and then once you're done with that, you may want to come back and start with the next settings that I'm going to show. So these here are the settings that you actually want to use. You'll see that my I am set to blend mode screen, the color is white, the opacity is 100%, the size is about 30, the range is about 56. Click OK, and then you're ready to proceed to the next step. You should end up with some artwork that looks a little bit like this. You can see a nice gradation from the white to the black, and we're ready to actually crop this down and get this ready for the Glowforge. So I've selected the crop tool, and now I'm just going to drag it in. I don't want to engrave away like six inches in material, so I want to cut this relatively close to the stamp itself. After a little bit of adjustment, you can just hit Enter, and now I'm going to come back to my background layer, which is down here, and I'm going to select the eraser. So if your layer is locked, you may have to double click it here to get rid of the lock. I'm going to go to the eraser tool, and I'm going to erase out a little bit of this background so that we don't have to engrave the entire rectangle around the stamp. I'm using the eraser tool just because in the moment it was the fastest way I could think to do this. You could also bring this back in Illustrator and crop it. You could use the clipping mask or the selection tool, but ultimately this only took a few seconds to erase out the background, so I did it with the eraser. I wanna make sure I leave enough room that when this stamp is done engraving, I can still cut it out with scissors and not cut my design. So I'm actually coming back in with the brush tool to just make a few minor adjustments. Um, after tweaking the outline shape for a few more seconds, I'm pretty much ready to save this and proceed to actually printing this with the Glowforge. Now all we have to do is save our artwork for the Glowforge by going to File, Export, Quick Export as PNG, Title Your Artwork, and click Save. 
Now I'm going to switch to the Glowforge interface and you can see I already kind of have something um, uploaded here but I noticed if you see that little pink dot that I hadn't perfectly erased this image so I went back and corrected it and now I'm going to re-upload it. Now there's a little bit of a challenge with uploading PNGs. I also find this tends to happen with SVGs and that's that when you finally get this thing uploaded it comes in at the incorrect size. So once it's popped in, as we can see it there, I'm kind of like waiting around looking for it. And then finally, I went back to the interface, I zoomed out, and here it is, and it's gigantic. So my trick is to actually upload a vector version of the artwork in a PDF of the correct size, and then I can just match it by putting it on top of the correctly sized artwork and scaling it. That's kind of like a weird workaround, but the thing was that I was already going to engrave this image with a different vector file anyway, so I just used that. You can also use the rulers in the Glowforge interface, which you can see at the top and the bottom. So for me, it just made sense to scale it to an object I already knew was the correct size, but it's just as easy to use the rulers. So however you do it, once it's scaled correctly, just move it into place, and let's hit print. So once we hit print and we're waiting for it to give us our time, I'm gonna go back and show you the settings here. So for the engraving of the stamp, this is my stamp shoulder engrave settings. It's speed 310, precision power 93, and then you want to make sure that under grayscale you have very power, and you have it set to 450 dpi. So I know that went by pretty quick, but hopefully you can see it there. So now it looks like it's about a 16 minute engrave for a two inch stamp. Go ahead and click your magic button, and now it's time to clean our finished engrave. So this actually is an engrave of an incorrect stamp, so you're not going to see the shoulder here. But you will see that this is what you're going to get, a really, really ashy looking print. You're going to want to gently brush that out. I actually use a little mini vac to clean it up. And then clean your stamp with alcohol after you cut it out from the backing. And now we're ready to set up the base. So what I actually want to do is upload a vector version of my artwork. And this is what I could have used to scale my stamp to. And I want this one to be facing the correct direction because this is going to be for our actual wooden backer that we attach the rubber stamp to. So all we really need is we need the vector version of our artwork to engrave and then a circle the size we want the backer to be. And I think this one's like maybe about three-ish inches. I'm going to drag it onto a scrap of quarter inch birch or Baltic birch plywood. I really like this material because it's very affordable and I've never really had a lot of issues with cutting it. So you can see my settings for the cutting portion or the engraving portion I should say for a 0.3 millimeter engrave are 880 and then a 270 DPI here or LPI I think as the Glowforge says. And then it's 120 and full for the cut. So because this engrave has a much lower LPI at 270 versus 450 the engrave happens a lot quicker. We're also not engraving out as much material. So here you can see the Glowforge engraving the design and then afterwards cutting it. So with this one, you can see the engrave is not like super, super important. The only thing that really matters is that it's the exact same size as the stamp on the back because we're going to use this design on the front to align it when we're stamping. With our two items cut, now it's time to talk a little bit about that shoulder. So here's a regular stamp I've picked up from the store. You can see it has a foam backing and all of the little tiny details are supported. Those little ramps that are forming those tiny mountains are called the shoulder and they serve to support the details and make sure that you have an even stamp every time. If you don't follow the Photoshop part of my tutorial and you just engrave your vector art, this is what you're probably going to get. You can see how all the details are really, really delicate and definitely not going to hold up to any kind of stamping. If you've got your shoulder settings correct, you'll see that your stamp looks a little more like this. Now you can see those same mountainous ramps supporting the tiny details. We're not going to get any crushing when we have a proper shoulder. So let's get to the final stage, assembling the stamp. Now I happen to have some scrap craft foam just laying around. So my technique was just to use double stick tape, stick it to my stamps, stick it to the foam, 
and then once again add a little more double stick tape and apply it to the wooden backer. So here I'm just using strips of tape because I'm going to be switching out my design a couple different times to show you the results of the different types of stamps. So I did this experiment three different type, three different times I should say, and I had three different results. One with no shoulder, one with a sort of modified vector shoulder that didn't work, and then one with the correct shoulder shown at the beginning of the video in Photoshop. A few questions about this stage, and honestly, double stick tape works really, really well. You don't necessarily need a better adhesive. I'm going to show what I use for a more permanent bond later in the video, but here you can see me doing the lineup. So all I do is I kind of look at it from both sides. I try to make sure it's going to match from front to back as best I can, and then I just stick it on there. I haven't really had any major issues with this. I suppose if you were doing like typography that had to sit perfectly flat on a line, you might want to mark the back with a ruler or something, but this method works perfectly fine for me. So now we're ready to ink our first stamp. And this is the correct stamp, so this is the one with the shoulder. I find like a tapping motion tends to work better than a rubbing motion because you're going to get more even coverage on all the high points of the stamp. And with a quick press, let's take a look at what we've got here. So I actually put a screenshot in because it's a little easier to see, but you can see crisp, sharp lines throughout. This is why the shoulder matters. So now let's actually swap out our stamp with the first experiment I did, which is where I engraved just the vector with no shoulder. So you can see I've done the same thing with this one. I've added a foam backer. I'm just going to stick a quick piece of double stick tape onto the back, I'm actually using the same ones. I'm going to line it up using that sort of like back and front kind of just looking technique, you know, a little technique to it. Um, and now I'm going to stamp this one as well. So as I was stamping this, I could immediately tell this was not going to print well. Those tiny little swirl lines were easily crushed the second they hit the ink. So they're smudging, they're kind of smearing, and they're really not going to hold their shape. For really bold reverse designs, like you actually saw in the title card, which is like a wax seal, you don't necessarily need the shoulder. But for designs like this, you're going to need it. So here you can see that the design is crushed, it's warped, it's simply not going to print well. And finally, I'm going to actually show you one other design I did. Um, this was sort of an intermediary experiment. I really don't like having to transfer the vector artwork to Photoshop. So I initially tried adding um, like a border around it in a medium gray in Illustrator. And it kind of worked, but it's it's not as successful as the actual Photoshop shoulder. So you really need that outer glow. I, w I know you can create outer glows in Illustrator, but I didn't have the same level of control as you do in Photoshop. So it really worked better to actually transfer the vector over into Photoshop instead of trying to add the outer glow in Illustrator. So you here you can see as I'm stamping, I'm taking a look at the stamp to see if the ink is getting on the back. So like the back negative space of the design and I was definitely having some issues with that. You can see because there's not enough gap between the lines of the design and the backer because that shoulder wasn't deep enough, you're going to have smudging. So I don't have a zoomed in version of this one, but you can see that there's like little artifacts. It didn't print terrible, but it definitely did not print as nicely as the one with the proper shoulder on it. Now that we've zeroed in on technique, it's time to permanently affix the correct stamp to this backer board. So this is probably one of my favorite things ever, and it's an advanced tape collider from, I believe, Scotch. It has these rolls of double stick adhesive, and they're very, very strong. So I'm going to apply them to my stamp after peeling off the cheap double stick tape. And I'm just going to kind of crisscross it over there. It's sort of, it's almost like depositing a glue. It's thinner, actually, than the double stick tape is. And I'm going to get it lined up as best I can, and then I'm going to press it into place. And now I'm going to test my final stamp. So one little mini tip while I'm inking this stamp up is you only need one layer of this craft foam. I did actually try doing two because if you remember my example Siamese cat stamp from earlier, it had some really, really thick foam. You can buy stamp specific foam, but this cheap like 20 cent craft foam actually worked perfect. It really did help give the stamp just enough give that you get a nice even impression. Using only a wood backing can sometimes make it difficult to rock your stamp properly and get an even impression all the way across.
And with that said, here is the final, final result for our completed stamp with shoulder. So hopefully that was really helpful and you kind of got some insight into the process. There's also a written tutorial, so if you need the steps one by one or you'd like to go back and look at the settings in more detail, check out the blog post that's linked below. Thanks everybody and good luck with your Glowforge stamping.